We've been helping people build and launch their no-code apps for nearly the past decade now. And during that time, there has been an absolute explosion of the no-code space. But that also means there's a lot of misinformation online. So today we're gonna set the record straight. Here's what's true about no-code and what's not. Number one, insert platform name here, is the absolute best platform for your app. If someone tells you that one specific no-code platform is definitively, without a doubt, the best platform to build your app on, I want you to be a little bit skeptical and investigate further. Now, here's the thing. We personally, at Coaching No-Code Apps, use Bubble specifically with all of our clients. But when someone reaches out for help, if they wanna work with us in our Built to Scale program, for example, we make sure that they have made the decision about using Bubble themselves before we actually talk to them about how we might be able to help them. Now, we'll certainly share all the resources and the facts and the answers that they need in order to make the right decision about you know whether it makes sense for them to use Bubble. But the last thing that we want to do is sway them toward using the platform just because we use it. And that might make it more likely that, you know, they'll end up working with us. And similarly, if we don't think Bubble is the right platform for someone's app, then we're going to tell them that too. And look, do we like Bubble? Yeah, we love it. It's, it's an awesome platform, but it's not the right platform for every single app idea that comes along. And the same is true for every single no-code app development platform out there. I'm just using Bubble as an example. So if you're being told that, you know, a certain platform is the absolute best option for your app and other platforms are wrong for your app, that's really what you need to pay attention to. You know, make sure whoever is telling you that, and they, they may very well be right, but make sure that they actually have experience with the platform that they're saying not to use. That's really the important part. Also make sure that your immediate goals for your app and your long-term goals are being taken into account because a no-code platform that is right for your immediate goals might not be right for those longer-term goals. Now, you don't wanna try to plan for every single what if scenario that could possibly come up in the future because that's just gonna lead to decision fatigue and you're not gonna take any steps forward, but you can find a balance. So really just make sure that the full context of what you're trying to achieve is taken into account so that you can plan ahead for uh, those future scenarios. Number two, you can launch your MVP in a month or two using no code. Now, first things first, I'm going to assume that you are wanting to build a custom data-driven application. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to a no-code app showcase so that you can actually see examples of what I'm talking about. But assuming that is the case, then it is very, very likely that you will not launch your MVP app in a month or two. In fact, anytime someone reaches out wanting to potentially join our Built to Scale program and they have a hard deadline of let's say eight weeks in which they need to go from complete idea to MVP or pilot app and there, there's absolutely no wiggle room, then we unfortunately have to point them in a different direction because we just would never want to mislead about what is realistically achievable. But here's why though, learning how to use a no-code development platform takes time, learning proper development methodology and best practices platform aside takes time, building your actual app takes time, developing your skill set while building the app takes time, working your regular job or running your business takes time, living your life takes time, all of these things take time. And so we want to be realistic about what you can build within a given time frame. You know, we have our own clients go through a 12 week process to build their pilot apps. And even though we are personally coaching and training them all along the way, even that 12 week time frame is still considered to be compressed. 
when I see people go at it completely alone, it often takes them one to two years or even more to build their apps. The reality is building a no-code app is about so much more than just learning how to use a no-code platform. You really have to develop a number of skills to use together. And a lot of those are just gonna be brand new to you. That's not a bad thing. You just need to have the right expectations so you can plan correctly and make the right decisions. Number three, anyone can build an app using no code. Now I say this in a supportive way versus anything else, but I often see it kind of marketed online that absolutely anyone can build an app using no code tools because there's no coding involved. And while generally this is largely true, in my opinion, it would be irresponsible not to mention the reasons why it might be harder for one person than it is for another. So what are the reasons why it might be harder? Well, one is if you are not a detail oriented person, if you in fact hate paying attention to the, the little details, then this might not be the best path forward for you because development is like a never ending puzzle where you are really constantly in the weeds, um, kind of ironing out little nuanced details. You know, when you're building an app, using no code tools, you're not coding, but you are still programming. It's just happening visually. That means that you are trying to tell in, in the most simplified way possible, you are trying to tell something that is a non-human that does not have a brain that can make assumptions about what you're trying to convey, how to perform complex functions. A really great example that I saw a while back on YouTube was someone having their kids, I think, teach them how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And so the kid was having to give instructions. Okay, so you put put your peanut butter on one slice of bread and put your, your jam or your jelly on the other slice of bread, right? Those are the really simple instructions. But if you were to compare that to trying to, you know, program this, then where's the bread coming from? What are you using to put the peanut butter on the bread? Where are you getting the peanut butter? How are you getting the utensil into the peanut butter jar, you know, without taking off the lid? I mean, you think about all the little teeny tiny steps that you would never think about if you're instructing someone to do this because it's second nature. It's assumed. Think of it that way. That is what programming involves even when you're not using any code. And so if you are a type of person who really hates being that detail oriented, then this can be a very difficult process because you truly have to retrain your brain entirely to think a different way. Now, does that mean you can't build a no-code app? Certainly not. I mean, you are a smart person who's very capable. You can do it. It's just going to be harder because you have to retrain the way you think first. And that's just gonna take a lot of repetition. Another reason why this might be harder is if you don't want to commit the time to build a no-code app and you're more so forcing yourself to do it. You know, I've seen people who outsourcing the development of an app is just off limits for them for budgeting purposes. And so they choose to build their app themselves because of that, right? It makes sense. But for the person who really doesn't want to be doing it, then it's it just ends up feeling like a chore. And it's because there is such a process involved in building a no-code app. It's very doable. We've seen hundreds of our own clients do it, right? But it takes time, it takes thought and focus, consistency. And if you really don't want to be doing any of that and you're just forcing it on yourself, it's very hard to maintain enthusiasm and it's really hard to just keep up the steam to see the app all the way through. So if this is like a last resort option and the idea of sitting down to build an app is painful for you, then I would rethink whether you should really be moving forward with this. Lie number four, you should be keeping your app a secret. Oh my, okay. 
this has always been a thing, no code or not, but I think it has sort of gained momentum with the evolution of no code because, you know, since it's easier or, or faster to build an app using no code tools, that means there's just more people who could possibly end up copying you. Now, there are going to be people who argue me on this forever, but speaking from experience, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen someone never actually launch their app idea simply because they were too scared to tell other people about it in case those people copied them. But being secretive like this causes three very big problems for you. Number one, you are never going to get real feedback on your app idea in the first place, because chances are, if you're feeling really secretive, you're probably only telling your closest friends and family about it to get feedback. And those people are not going to give you good feedback. Well, in fact, they are going to give you good feedback, but that might not be the right feedback because they love you and they want to support you. And that is not a good foundation to start with. Number two, you are never going to get any real good help with your app simply because you are too scared to share any of the finer details that someone would need in order to properly help you. And number three, you are going to struggle to find any users for your app because you're too scared to market it. I've seen this happen so many times for people who who do at least get to the stage of being able to launch the app they've built, they're just too scared to talk about it publicly. They keep everything hidden and secretive, and that is just not going to get people interested in your app because they're not going to know about it. You need to be talking about your app because you need to get other people excited about your app too. That is how you're going to make it successful. And the truth is, Nobody's really going to be interested in copying you. I mean, think about the path that you have taken to even get to the point of investing your time and your money into building this app idea. You've probably had lots of different experiences that have led you to this, and that is not commonplace. And realistically, for anyone if anyone did want to copy you, then I would really question their ability to see the app through because if someone can't even come up with their own app idea, then you know that doesn't really bode well for the future of that app in their hands. So look, your job as a founder is to get other people excited about the vision you have, and that requires you to just talk about what you're doing. All right, line number five you can build insert app type here in three days or three hours. I know we already talked about realistic timeframes for building an app, but this one deserves specific attention because if you browse through YouTube, for example, you're going to see different videos and titles of people, you know, showing how to build Uber in three days or how to build Airbnb in three hours. And then those videos show them building those apps within that time frame. I mean, we even have a demo of how to build Wordle on Bubble. And I think the process was like two and a half hours in total, including teaching. But what you don't see in these videos where people are building these apps in really short time frames is that they've already mastered the skill set required to do so. I mean, the fact is, if you are a beginner, for example, you're not going to be able to come on to Bubble and build Wordle in two and a half hours if you wanted to. You know, there there would be a lot more time involved in skill building first. In fact, if someone at, let's say, an intermediate level came on to Bubble and was going to clone Wordle, you know, maybe they would be able to do it within a certain time frame, but would they build it correctly, right? It might look and work the same in a demo, but would it scale? Would it perform well? You know, besides just learning how to use a no-code tool correctly, you have to understand correct development best practices and methodology, and that's no-code platform aside. So if there's just 
a lot more to what you often see in those compressed demos. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying any of this to deter you. What you are aiming to achieve is very likely possible. You just need to take the right approach. And part of that involves having the correct information, the right expectations so that you can make the right decisions because this is a, a venture, an endeavor that you are taking seriously. You're probably going to be investing a significant amount of time and money into bringing your app to life. And so you want to be able to move forward informed. That's what this is aimed to do for you. So listen, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, there is a lot more help waiting for you in a separate internal training we have that you can get free access to. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. And it's basically going to take you by the hand and walk you step by step through the process of um, going through the strategy around your app idea, choosing a no-code platform on which to build it, and really just becoming a no-code app entrepreneur, seeing what other people are doing with their apps and so on. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to check that out. And we'll see you in the next one.